Okay. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, today, you know, uh, we will discuss the uh, gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the process by which um, glucose is synthesized from non-carbohydrate sources like uh, lactate, pyruvate, uh, glucogenic amino acids and uh, glycerol. Uh, now, uh, the lactate is accumulated due to the anaerobic uh, glycolysis and this uh, lactate uh, from the muscles is uh, taken to the liver and in the liver, the lactate is converted to uh, pyruvate with the help of lactate dehydrogenase and this pyruvate uh, is uh, used for the uh, formation of uh, glucose. Uh, first, uh, pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetate with the help of uh, pyruvate carboxylase and uh, now this uh, requires uh, carbon dioxide and uh, biotin uh, as it is a carboxylation reaction. Now the oxaloacetate is now converted with the help of uh, phosphoenol pyruvate uh, carboxykinase uh, to the uh, phosphoenol uh, pyruvate. Now uh, in this process uh, carbon dioxide is uh, released. In both these steps there is requirement of um, um, high energy bonds. In the first step it is uh, uh, GTP and in the second step it is uh, ATP. Now further uh, so the phosphoenone pyruvate is now uh, converted by a series of reactions to the stage of uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Uh, now fructose 1,6-bisphosphate requires uh, another enzyme to get converted to uh, fructose 6-phosphate that is known as fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. Whereas the, in the glycolysis, the fructose 6-phosphate is uh, converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate uh, by phosphofructokinase enzyme. Uh, now, uh, by further reactions, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then uh, lastly, glucose 6-phosphate with the help of glucose 6-phosphatase is converted to glucose. So, uh, gluconeogenesis in essence um, uh, make use of uh, some of the enzymes of the glycolysis but uh, there are uh, four specific enzymes uh, that is required uh, for the gluconeogenesis. They are pyruvate carboxylase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase, um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase and uh, glucose 6-phosphatase. Now all these enzymes are uh, activated by uh, glucagon and also uh, glucocorticoids. Whereas these enzymes uh, are inhibited by insulin. Insulin actually uh, stimulates the glycolysis uh, by stimulating uh, glucokinase, phosphofructokinase and uh, pyruvate kinase. Uh, these three steps of glycolysis are uh, irreversible reactions uh, and hence we have to have alternate enzyme, alternative enzymes uh, to catalyze uh, in, in place of these enzymes so that we can synthesize uh, glucose from non-carbohydrate uh, sources. Now in a well-fed state it is found that uh, glycolysis is favored and also glycogenesis is also favored. Whereas in a fasting state it is the gluconeogenesis and the glycogenolysis that, uh, that uh, predominate in a, a fasting state. So, uh, the, as I told you earlier, the insulin um, stimulates uh, glycolysis and uh, glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis whereas uh, glucagon has got the opposite action, uh, it inhibits the glycolysis and uh, glycogenesis whereas it will uh, stimulate the gluconeogenesis and uh, the uh, glycogen breakdown that is glycogenolysis. So in this manner, the insulin and glucagon are very much uh, related to the uh, carbohydrate uh, metabolism. Uh, now in the diabetes mellitus, where the, there is a lack of insulin, the glycolysis and the glycogenesis uh, will be uh, decreased, the rate of these processes will be decreased, whereas 
uh, the uh, rate of uh, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis will be uh, increasing. So uh, there is a lot of uh, significance to the process of gluconeogenesis because uh, when we are fasting, uh, we have to get the energy from uh, uh, glucose and uh, the brain can utilize uh, mainly glucose and also uh, red blood cells uh, also are able to utilize only uh, glucose. So gluconeogenesis is a very important uh, phenomena in this uh, process. Um, uh, next uh, uh, we can see uh, something about the uh, you know uh, beta oxidation of uh, fatty acids. Now beta oxidation of fatty acids is the process uh, whereby the fatty acids are oxidized um, for the energy purpose and uh, the fatty acids may be uh, short chain fatty acids, uh, medium chain fatty acids and uh, uh, long chain or, or and even very long chain fatty acids. Now these fatty acids uh, has to be transported into the mitochondria and this transport requires um, a carrier molecule that is the uh, carnitine. Now with the help of carnitine and in the presence of um, uh, carnitine uh, palmitoyl uh, transferase uh, 1 and uh, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 and uh, carnitine translocase the fatty acids are transported uh, from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria. So prior to this the fatty acids have to undergo activation uh, and for this uh, acyl-CoA synthase enzyme is required uh, which will uh, uh, combine the carnitine molecule and the fatty acid. So this uh, because acyl uh, the fatty acids are not uh, permissible into the mitochondria so it has to be transported as acyl carnitine and within uh, the mitochondria the uh, fatty acids are uh, regenerated and the uh, uh, beta oxidation is uh, continued. Now um, beta oxidation consists of several steps. Uh, first step is the acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. It's a dehydrogenation reaction in which the hydrogen removed are accepted by a flavoprotein which becomes uh, FADH2. Now FADH2 can go to the electron transport chain and can produce uh, 1.5 molecules of ATP. Now, uh, due to this reaction, um, delta 2 trans enoyl CoA is produced. Now, uh, in the next reaction, there is a hydratase enzyme which will add water, and um, water will be added to trans enoyl CoA, and uh, what is produced is hydroxy acyl uh, CoA. Now, uh, this hydroxy acyl CoA in the third step is uh, also dehydrogenated and uh, the enzyme required is acyl, uh, hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase. Now the hydrogens are accepted by NAD which will become NADH plus H plus. NADH can further go to the uh, electron transport chain and produce uh, 2.5 ATP molecules. Now in the next reaction uh, what is produced is uh, uh, 3 keto acyl uh, CoA and with the help of thiolase enzyme the 3 keto acyl CoA uh, splits into a 2 carbon unit known as uh, acetyl CoA and uh, uh, forms uh, another acyl CoA molecule with uh, 2 carbon atoms less. Now in this process, uh, now if this process is further repeated uh, till uh, maybe a, a 16 carbon fatty acid uh, is converted to uh, 8 acetyl CoA molecule, uh, 2 carbon units, and this uh, takes about uh, 7 cycles. So, uh, it produces um, uh, large quantities of uh, uh, ATPs, uh, but in uh, diabetes mellitus, it is possible that there is uh, increased uh, uh, lipolysis taking place from the adipose tissue due to the stimulation of the hormone sensitive lipase and the free uh, fatty acids that is resulted are uh, oxidized by beta oxidation and so there is an excessive amount of beta oxidation going on and uh, there is an excessive amount of acetyl-CoA also produced but acetyl-CoA 
uh, you know, requires uh, auxiliary acetic acetate to form the citrate so that TCA cycle can be processed. But uh, as auxiliary acetic acid is uh, relatively less in a diabetic state, uh, the acetyl CoA goes for the formation of ketone bodies, and the ketone bodies are acetoacetate, beta hydroxybutyrate, and um, uh, acetone. So, in diabetes mellitus, uh, there is a chance of uh, ketoacidosis uh, taking place.